evening and welcome to Fashion and Lifestyle Show on Calvin TV. I'm Siobhan Harton and I'm here with Pat Dunn. Pat is a colour consultant and a fashion stylist. Pat, welcome to Fashion and Lifestyle on Calvin TV. Thank you. How are you doing? Um, Pat, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background. Well, I've been involved in this line of work for since about 1982. And um, I started off just part time in a, a makeup company and was always very interested in it. And I went on then to um, to working with a company that I was their sales rep in Ireland. And um, they trained me in makeup and skin and all that sort of thing. But you know, you're in-house trained, so you don't really have any qualifications outside the, the company. So I started doing trainings myself and I trained then as a, um, a colour consultant and um, it, it was very big at the time in the 80s, everyone was getting colour coded and had it like a religion yeah. and so between Paris and um, London I actually did my training and um, because I was uh, open to different people I could work with through the company I was working for at the time and um, I then was working within my own cosmetic company. Uh, I franchised it from the original company I was working for and um, I've just been, you know, freelancing for a long time and do a lot of weddings and fashion shows and I have lots of individual clients who come to me for advice if they're going anywhere special or if they just want to change, you know, every time people turn like 30, 40, 50, they think they need to revamp their, their look and they'll um, I have clients like that that I would actually work with, you know? Yeah, and well, that's very exotic because you trained in Paris and in mm. London mm. as well. Mm. And you've been a bit modest because you actually worked on a lot of fashion shoots as yes, well. Did, yes, and yes, theatre yes. and mm. film mm. sets. And uh, so you've got a world of experience in that mm. sense yes, around yeah, yeah. it. It's very enjoyable to work with people like that. And, and it's not as glamorous as it sounds, though. You could be standing in the middle of a mucky field to put makeup on somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for the fashion shoots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for yeah, yeah. Or, or for the film, film as well. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. is there any films that uh, we know that you've worked? Well, on I would have been. I would. I wouldn't have been kind of doing the top um, uh, stars in it. I would be always kind of working with another artist. So you would never see my name kind of on the on, on, on the, the credits, yeah, on the credits behind, or that sort yeah. of thing, you know. But um, but it, it, a lot of my work would have been with kind of um, uh, communities, you know, where they have the amateur dramatic societies and, and that kind of thing. I've done a lot of that now during the 18th and 90th. I would have done it, worked with them. Um, the uh, opera, there was um, a, um, a friend of mine who was an opera singer and um, we used to work with them when they were doing the, the operas and um, they, they would do private parties, you know, for people in... Uh, in the in the, the good old days the Celtic Tiger when there were corporate events yeah and they would be having these um, functions in these big hotels and houses taking them over for the weekend and then the um, Rathgar Amateur Dramatic Society which would be very it's big, very high yeah, 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 yeah very it's very high profile yeah dramatic society yeah and uh, yeah. Um, <coughs> one of the things like pick places like that you know well, well it yeah, seems yeah. very glam yeah it, yeah, it does seem <laughs> very glam and yeah. what would be the difference between doing the makeup for say something like film and TV than doing your own makeup for, to go out on a Saturday night well our own makeup we're supposed to look normal right <laughs> <laughs> supposed to look normal but when you some people don't really get it right yeah, sometimes yeah, what's, the, what's the main kind of uh, problem or the main thing that you'd see that would be an issue well um, an issue is a lot of people when they're getting married and they want really nice photographs of the wedding album mm -hmm. and they spend a lot of money but they, they kind of kind of cut corners maybe on makeup artists Okay. And like, as so in, they do it themselves. Yes, they do it. So you just, when you're, you have to be a little bit heavy-handed in a certain way to kind of get the right look on camera, mm -hmm. whether it's um on for TV or film or a, a fashion show. Now you have to be very, very strong because people are way back in the audience to actually see if you see them up close to be very clown-like. But um, back in an audience, it, they they would look good. Although at the moment now they um the the catwalk is very, very dramatic and very over the top that's just the the season that they're doing that for is but that would that be for the christmas season that's coming in yeah, yeah, for it, it's really every, dramatic at, at the season, they, they change mm. every season and then um, if you even look at any small snippets you might see on the television at the moment they're um big stripes on the eyes and you know they're really and the hair sleeks back off the face that it's all makeup and no hair nearly you know they're yeah. the all gel back all gel back yeah, yeah. and, and uh, i've heard an, a new term because there's the dew look it was really big for a while and then there's the the moon look 
Well, that's no. because What's of that? the twilight. You see, that's the big, there's always a, a fashion. I remember way back in the 80s, out of Africa was the big um, blockbuster at the time. And um, colour coding would have been big at the time. And out of Africa, everyone wanted to wear those colours because that's what it is. And the same now, the twilight, you know, this pasty white skin ah, of the yeah. vampire. Like the vampire look. That's the, um, that's the moon look. That's the moon look. Okay. Now, that kind of and is there a certain type of person that the moon look would look good on and a certain type of person that it yeah, wouldn't look good on? Yeah, there's um, two different types of, um, of, of categories. And um, there's we your colour in, in your jeans. They either say you're warm or you're cool. Okay, so what does that mean if you're warm and or you're cool? If you're warm, you'll be somebody that with under undertones in their skin would be kind of a golden yellow undertones. Okay. And so they would have a nice kind of a golden look look about them. Yeah. And or they could be quite ivory looking, somebody with freckles or that sort of thing. Where a cold person, a cool person, mm. would have blue pink undertones. I know okay. it sounds weird. Fable. So would that would that be like someone with black hair and blue eyes? Would black hair, be? brown, it, it, it brown eyes. Very, it just brown or black. The eyes don't necessarily dictate. It would be the skin more so on the hair. Okay. And unfortunately, our parents don't um, uh, consult each other before they decide to have us. So you always have to do a bit of both. In so your eyes yeah, it can just happens. Yeah, your eyes can be brown, which could have little kind of a green rim around them. That will bring you into the uh, into the cool area. But those people with that with that kind of skin can look really, really good in that silvery, as I say, moonlight the look. The moonlight look. Yeah. You and know? So with my skin tone... Which is because you're you're a warm person. Right. You're, you, you would I'm actually, warm. You're warm. Warm yeah, heart. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they, um, you know, you'd look... Um, it, you could get away with it. You'd have to tone the whole, do, do a big job on it and that yeah. and that. But it wouldn't be, it just, just wouldn't sit as well with you as somebody uh, that was cool, you know? Yeah. And and like even when you were saying there about makeup, um, like when it's the difference in ma- us wearing day makeup and and then make wearing makeup then when you're working on on TV or that, yeah, it just has to be a little bit heavier just so that it um it shows up on cameras because when you have lights and all that on you, mm-hmm. it kind of um blots you out. Yeah. So if you ha- if your blusher is really kind of natural looking when the lights and all that go on you and look you look kind of quite pasty and you wouldn't look like you have any color at all you know yeah because that's another thing as well is um and we spoke about this earlier as well is um when people get found out or to get the foundation right is really really important mm. because it's the basic yeah. mm. and fake tan is mm. another thing that people get really wrong yeah well, you see the foundation a lot of people make the mistake of saying i'm very pale mm. and they buy a foundation to darken themselves up mm-hmm. and a foundation should never be seen on your face it should only just kind of um, camouflage any little flaws you have there. It's like somebody doing, doing an artist doing a painting. It's just yep. preparing the canvas. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to create, you want to look better, you want a little bit of colour in your cheeks, um, you put a little bit of blusher on, a bit of lipstick on, you know, do your eyes. And that actually creates, um, you're looking at you better because yeah. you're being sick and you're pasty. You don't put on two ton of dark makeup. The way to pick out a foundation is if you don't see it on your neck, it's the right colour. So if it blends into your yeah, neck. Yeah, if you actually put right a color. test on your neck. And a lot of people go into chemist shops and that and they buy them to try in the back of the hand. Yeah. The back of the hand is totally different than the face. Right. So you should try it on your um on, on your neck and they usually say three shades and the one that you can't see is the one that you that you use because you blend it into your um jawline. So you don't bring it down to your neck line as no, well, you blend no, it into you your jawline. Line. But what you can do then is you can um bring your powder when you put your powder on, mm-hmm. you can actually bring that down because that actually makes the texture of your neck and your face look the same. Okay. So you can bring that down onto your, onto your neck, but not your foundation because it pulls and drags and goes all over your collars and yeah. whatever. You know? And then if you were to wear, um, say, fake tan, which a lot of people get the white face and yeah, then the brown. That's it. Yeah, what they so do what is, see is the um, what you, you, whatever colour your neck is, your foundation should be the same colour. Right. So okay. I always so suggest that people have three shades of foundation mm-hmm. and in the same brand so they can have the pale one when they're either in the winter time or they have no tan or no fake tan or whatever mm-hmm. they can have the darker one when they have the fake tan on or they have a tan and then because they're the same brand you can um, you can blend them okay mix your own makeup Ma- yeah put a little bit you know if you say that's too light and I'm not dark enough for that yet or even two colors would do because you can make three shades out of two colors 
So how would you do that? Because you'd have the pale one, you'd have the dark one, and if you put a little, a little bit of the dark and a little bit of the pale, yeah, you've got an, an in-between colour. Okay, so But you see, you need to have the same brand to do that. To do you couldn't that. mix two different um Because a lot of people would use bronzer to, to yeah, get the same shade people, Yeah, well, people do a bronzer, but the bronzer's not necessarily the same shade as the tan you have. The tan, right. You know, yeah. and um, bronzers so are only... multi colours Yeah, bronzers are actually uh, designed to actually um, just create a... a, a Contours and illusions on, on, on the face. It's not there to kind of cover your whole face. So you it's mean contours? Is that yeah, doing you the, the, jaw right, the right way to apply a bronzer is to do the figure three, mm-hmm. just down along the side of your face, and on the bridge of your nose. That's where the, the where the sunlight actually catches you. So to do the bronzer is to get a kind of a, a sun kiss kind yeah, of sun kiss look, look on it, look yeah, on it. rather than all over the whole face. Right. And, yeah, because uh, yeah. you see, you normally yeah. just yeah. do a quick. Well, yeah. that's them. Um, that's, so that's what you should be doing is having your foundation on correctly. But there again, when you're rushing out to work in the morning, we mean whatever looks good, you know. Yeah, that's normally in the car. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, yeah well, people say to me, how, how does my makeup not last all day? I say, where do you put it on? At the traffic lights in the car, of course, it's not going <laughs> yeah. to last all day. Yeah. And don't yeah. do that, people. We're not advising to do it at the traffic yeah, lights you know, in the car. No, they don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, uh, you don't kind of get. Another thing people do, they put their moisturizer on and they put their foundation on immediately. And then the foundation slides. Slides, yes. Yeah. So you need, if you haven't got time for your moisturizer to sink into your skin, you should just blot it. Yeah, okay. Just get it first. So that's skin. a good, that's actually a really mm-hmm. good tip. So if your foundation, if you want to put your moisturizer on first, mm-hmm. blot it with, with some tissue. Yeah, yeah. Just blot it with yeah. some yeah. tissue and then your foundation yeah. on after that. After that, you know, it just gives you the time. Mm-hmm. I'd always put, put it on before you clean your teeth and give yourself the time for just to to settle on your face because they're just and then another thing people do too they put on their foundation and they rub and rub and rub and, and they rub it off and they rub it off well, well, we're going and they rub it all, all into the the sides of their face so there's loads of makeup around the face and ah, they're just and, li- and white yeah, yeah. so definitely two mm-hmm. tones there mm-hmm. on the face well what we're going to do now is we're going to actually take a break and pat's going to do some demonstrations uh, after the break Thank you. I'm Gavin Duffy and I'm saying watch CavanTV.com. It's a great opportunity to see some great programs and you can watch it all around the globe via the internet and on many platforms. I watch it myself, great stuff.
Yeah, to Ockney will be fine. Okay. Good evening and welcome back to Calvin TV Fashion and Lifestyle. I'm Siobhan Harton and I'm here with Pat Dunn. Pat's going to do a demonstration on our model for this evening and it's Monica Sheridan. And Pat's going to do some coloured demonstrations. Uh, well, Monica here is um, a, a client and friend of mine and um, we've done a lot of talking over the years about um, colour coding and whatever and a lot of people are interested in it. I just want to explain to you what um, colour coding is and what it's all about. Basically what you're talking about is the, the skin tone. Right. Okay. And yeah. there you can actually see there, and I put my hand beside Monica's. Obviously, uh, the difference in the skin oh, tone. Oh, there's a warmer. Is there a warmer tone in your hand? My, no, mine is actually blue. Yours is colder. Okay. Okay. Where Monica's yeah. is golden. Oh, okay. So that, without doing any other demonstration, you can actually see that immediately. Yeah. So that's um. So you can see how uh, red and kind of the, the the pink tones of my hands are. Yeah. And Monica's totally totally golden. Yeah. So without even uh, that. So what happens is in those cases is certain clothes suit suit, suit you better. Okay. You know, certain yeah, colours, you know, yeah. and uh, what there's two different um, uh, families of colour. Right. There's warm and cool, mm -hmm. and warm people would have golden undertones, as you can see there with, with Monica, yeah. and I then have the, the blue undertones, because I'm actually, so it's good to have the two of us here together, okay. you can see, see it, yeah. so I would have um, blue undertones. Now, when I was being trained first, I found it very hard to see blue on my skin, yeah. and thought I was being trained to come home and do a job here of training other people and I mm -hmm. thought I'd surely be sacked because I can't even see what they're talking about. Yeah. Right? But eventually... Did you think of someone being really cold? As yeah, blue, yeah, you know, and, that, that and, and whatever. And I mean, cold. all I could see was skin and where yeah. it's blue and where, where it's all this. Yeah. But um, the, within the two, the, the two colours, right, um, there's, there's also two colours. Mm -hmm. So, for right. instance, there's um, warm people. Yeah. Okay? And warm people... Or would have this kind of a palette here, okay? Right. The, the okay. So you can see that. So, so they're actually orange and browns, browns and, and blues greens and, and yellows and all so that. So that's that for kind of warm people. Yeah. And you say on the top there's autumn and autumn spring. Autumn and then the spring. Okay. So that breaks down. Now, if you're in autumn, mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can wear spring, okay? Because oh. what autumn has is all muted, overripe colours. Okay. You know, I see the trees at the moment, yeah, they're all beautiful, everything at, the beautiful at the moment. Absolutely well, that's what, what autumn is. Right. Okay? Where spring is, the, it's, we're starting off at the beginning of the, the growth season mm -hmm. and everything is sharp and clear and bright. Fresh and vibrant. Fresh and vibrant. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So what relates to that is actually the winter colours. Right. From the other palette, from the cool palette. Okay. Because they are sharp and clear. Okay, and they're strong. And strong. They're very strong, bold colours. Bold colours. Winter, winter colours yeah. are strong and bold. So as Monica is a spring person, right. these are the colours that really would enhance her. Okay, okay, so can we look in on that? Can we yeah. hold in on that just to, for Monica, the colours there? And you can see what That's the... It. Monica is a spring mm -hmm. colour. A spring colour. So you yeah. can see the golden colours would really okay. suit her very, very well. Yeah. Okay. So, but as I say, you think, oh God, I can wear these colours so I can wear them. But what she can actually borrow from is her winter colours. So when you say borrow, what do you mean? It then? means that her base colours that should look better in all the time would be her spring colours. Okay, so that's but what she'd use as her that's base. That's what she'd use. But if she kind of wanted to wear something different, and as you can see her blue mi mixing in with her colours here that she's actually yeah. wearing at the moment, yeah. so she can actually borrow from that. From the blue, because the blue really lifts Monica's eyes yes, as well. Yes, exactly. You see because she's the, yeah. yeah. So you see where I'm, I'm coming oh, yeah. from there. Yeah, and you, you use it like an accent colour. Yeah, and what we've done there then is her makeup is actually matching her whole thing you see her eye makeup and you were and saying actually before i remember talking to you before and uh, it was that it's really important to get the makeup right with yeah. the clothes even you if wear. you decide okay I, they told me i'm spring colors i'll never wear spring colors in my life i'm going to wear whatever yeah you you, you have to match your makeup to your palette so to the clothes yeah. that you're wearing yeah, because i mean people might say they always wear um orange lipstick yeah. And they decide to go out and get a piercy pink dress. Okay, so the clash. They so clash, there's a clash yeah. going on. And that, that even it. means in your eyeshadow, the whole, I mean, for people to look professionally made up, yeah. again, they've got to make up from the same palette. Their eyeshadow and their blush and the lipstick should all come from the, the, the same, same palette. palette. Yeah. You know, like the, uh, and that on it. And as I said then, with the, um, within the, the cool colours, you have winter and summer. Okay? Now, summer colours are the muted ones you know when, the, when we have lovely sunny weather yeah and it's um the hazy when we used to have those summers one time 
the, everything is muted, you know, you have Heather and everything is muted. Yeah. So they're the people that can actually borrow from your autumn because they're the overripe ones and they're the muted ones. Right, okay. So you can see, you know, where you can so see if I put them, if I put silver up on Monica, while she still looks very good because not nobody ever looks bad. Yeah. But you can see that doesn't really go with her skin. Okay, it, so it kind of yeah, dulls her down. It dulls her down. Yeah. Where when you put so the, the colours that suit you, when you put them up against your face, it actually lifts your face. You know, the like right colours, so it enhances. You see it. the way that her lipstick yeah. evens after coming out the colour of her yeah. lipstick immediately, you put that up to her face. Yeah. Where before, when I had the other one up to it, you couldn't actually see it. It does it. It's interesting and it's a matter of choice and people find it very interesting. Yeah. But I find with it, um, I always give people a little, a little card uh, uh -huh. of, the, uh, of both their borrowed colours and their other colours. It makes it so much easier for you when you're um, shopping. Right. Because you can instantly go on that, on, on, on that rail, not on that rail. And it's also much easier for you to mix and match. Okay. Because if, you're, if you have a certain colour palette in your wardrobe yeah. and you pick up something else, you can match it in with, um, with all your other clothes. Yeah. So easy, like you, if you have a, a suit in, from one colour palette, you can kind of wear the trousers with another jacket or the jacket over a dress yeah. and really be versatile about your wardrobe. And that's something else I help people with, right. with their styling and what actually would... Um, okay, what now they just had to go to another ad break there, mm -hmm. just in the middle of it. Yeah. So looking to see if you do something with Monica. Mm -hmm. Okay. With that. Welcome back to Calvin TV Fashion and Lifestyle. I'm here with Pat Dunn and our beautiful mod Thanks. Monica. And um, Pat's showing us um, what a uh, demonstration on colour and colour what uh, colour suits you and clothes and makeup. And she's talking about warm palettes and uh, cold palettes and our skin tones. <clears throat> okay, as you see uh, on Monica here, I've got the two um, draped with, with the two colours. This is the gold colour and the silver colour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's the color. That's the silver color there. So and that really cools. Monica that really down. cools. Well, it, it doesn't does, it makes brighten her up. It doesn't. Yeah. Lift I her. always feel it makes her when you have the wrong color on your skin. Actually, nearly looks kind of Dull. green, ill, yeah, sick. You know yeah. that you don't look. Even though Monica has her makeup and all on there. Mm -hmm. Where when you put the gold one up, which is the right one for her, you can actually see the way it. Um, yeah, it lifts. It actually lifts her her, yeah. her, com her whole complexion. Complexion. Yeah. And that. So when if Monica was to do makeup or anything like that, that she's used gold colours and yeah, well, that, yeah, as well, that's as well she's as green. Um, yeah, she's green there. We have what we've done with her. Her lipstick is kind of a corally orange, mm -hmm. and her blusher is the same with a highlighter blusher in in kind of a lighter gold. Right. We've done green and bronze on her eyes. Mm -hmm. And so that actually is kind of from the same color. It doesn't mean that's that from this palette. And here that's actually from well. the, the spring palette. Yeah. So, so you've lifted everything. So Monica's a spring person and you've lifted everything from Everything from that. Palette. Yeah, the colours I would have that. used from it would have been kind of on her eyes, I've used that and this. Yeah. And on her uh, cheeks, I've used um that uh -huh. and this. Right. And on her lips I've used kind of a combination of those two middle yeah. colours there yeah and so as you can see it's very natural looking it is very natural it's lovely yeah, yeah. and yeah. and that and as I say when that's on her then that actually totally it lifts, li lifts, lifts her face. face yeah and then when and what Monica's wearing then today you've used the undertone of the gold the as well exactly we've got it him, there. yeah so she's wearing mm -hmm. actually a kind of a greeny goldy color, base yeah. and then the, the blue is in it which as I mentioned earlier on is from her borrow colors right because the opposite and that's the, the, the winter that's one that's the winter one which is the, the total opposite to her um her other one 
So now that's say something that can at, actually go quite well on Monica as well, those yeah, colours. Yeah, yeah, because the blue looks yeah, fantastic yeah. on Monica yeah, there as well. Really so say well. you were sitting at home watching Calvin TV tonight and Fashion and Lifestyle and was wondering what what your own colour was. Oh. How would you know that? How would you define that for yourself? Though? Well, um, what you need to look for first is if your hair is naturally red or golden. Okay. That brings you into the warm. Right. Right. So that's if you've got freckles, that brings you into the what warm we palette. Said earlier on, yeah. Yeah. And um, if you have very black hair, you know, natural blue black hair. Yeah. You know, people can have kind of very dark brown hair, but it could have kind of red copper glints in it. Yeah. If the red copper glints in it, it's bringing them into warm. Whereas that blue black hair. Yeah. You can also be a winter person if you have snow white blonde hair. Right. Okay. Do you know that note? So you use those blues. You use those, those blues as well. You don't. It doesn't necessarily have and to be And is there any place that people can look up? Because we, we've said that before. That if there's people that can look up, like you've got a website, mm -hmm. um, and is there any information on that website that they can look at? Well, there are uh, There's nothing on about color on my website, and right. um, because it's in the middle, that something happened to it. But it, but it just gives details of uh, where you can contact me if you need any advice. So it's called www.mobilemakeup.ie. But if you put, go in on the website, uh, uh, on the internet, and put in colour coding, yeah, um, I'm sure you'll get lots and lots and lots of different um, things. You can buy books. There's lots of books out there you can buy. So if you look up uh, colour coding, you'll be able to look at that um, on the all, internet. Uh, 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 yeah, you can coding. get lots of information there. Um, the only thing about it is, you know, if you're just looking for something for yourself, unless you're somebody that's really interested in it, yeah. um, you get a lot of information that's nothing got to do with you. Right. So um, it, in that case, it can be very... Um, daunting for somebody that's really not that it you just want to know for themselves yeah and um, i find a lot of the shops now are very good a lot of the girls in the shops are trained or have an idea of what goes together they'd never give you um you know a dress and a jacket that would clash for each other yeah and uh, so they're, to they're, seek advice yeah. in the shops when yeah. you are going and about and most shop assistants will yeah, know would about have color coding as well the other thing too you've got to be careful of if you go and dye your hair red 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 you've yeah. got to go with the red 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 with everything else because um you, you know, like it's the most obvious thing about you that you want to blend in. Yeah. And if you don't, um, if you if you change your hair color, you've got to change the the rest. The whole palette. So yeah. it's like change your hair color, yeah, change yeah. your wardrobe. And that's a lot of things. That's where people make the mistake. Right. You know. That and, they, uh, they don't change their wardrobe. And you can see an example from them. Monica there. I mean, she's totally coordinated. Her, yeah. A little bit of jewelry, everything. Her makeup, her hair, everything matches and everything suits them. Yeah. And well, thank thing. you very much, Pat, for that. And thank you very much, thank Monica, for coming in, our beautiful model. Yes, here. Sure. And yeah. I think we've got loads mm. of food for thought, and I think loads of people will be actually Googling colour coding after that because it's really, really good mm. and inspirational. And if you want to see any more of Pat's um, mobile makeup, it's www.mobilemakeup.ie. And thanks for watching Calvin TV Fashion and Lifestyle. I'm Siobhan Harton. Good night. <laughs>